Hello, welcome back to Wild About Nature. I was only away two weeks and the garden has changed dramatically in that time. It's like totally wild and I dare say needs a bit of pruning, but I thought I'd do a quick video just to show you the solitary bees. Now, if ever anyone was any, in any doubt about how much habitats can benefit solitary bees, maybe this video will assuage that. Since I've been gone, the leaf cutter bees have moved in on this new habitat, which I never thought they would because it's, uh, it's new and the wood is unseasoned. So that contradicts that. I do think Osmia rufa, or I think they're called Osmia bicornis as well, the red mason bee, doesn't like fresh wood. Uh, but these leaf cutter bees seem to have no problem with it. But the real action, if I take it out, look at the garden, look, it is about five foot high in places. But it's so full of life, it's, it's extraordinary how things can change. We're just going to take you up to the main... All the alliums there have come out. Take you up to the main habitats and you'll see what I mean when I say about the, the uh, solitary bee habitats. Now these are another form of os osmia. Now you can see here they've all hatched. Can you see those? That particular area there is full of holes where they've hatched out. And just look at them. They are buzzing. I did a similar video a few years ago, but it's even more, there's even more of them than, than, than then. Even the, the new habitat there has, has got some on it. And look at the main monster here. It's just crazy. Never seen this many. I was trying to count them earlier. And I think there's probably around 300 at any one point, at least I would say. They're fighting over the holes. Why? I don't know, because there's 5,000 here, or 4,000 in this one, and 16,000 overall. But they do get very, very territorial over their hole, as, uh, as you'd expect, wouldn't we all? Again, even the old faithful here is, um, is, is, is busy, and this one's, they've all been used over and over again, these holes, giving more evidence that they will reuse holes it's evident there just take you up a bit further again this is a new one here as well the Chinese lantern and that's uh, that's got loads of insects buzzing around it they've yeah, they've started populating the bottom there about here and they started populating the top although that's Osmia rufa by Cornis not necessarily these little guys which I I know they're Osmia family because the scopa are underneath the abdomen as opposed to the legs but I'm not sure of the specific name of them really this is just a video to show just how busy this whole thing is if I turn around now you'll you'll get a feeling for that but I hope you enjoy the video it's only a quickie uh, I just I know some people are particularly interested in solitary bees like me and it's so important to show the difference that you can make and also not by and in doing that not have a negative effect because by creating more bees you're only really helping with pollination if there weren't enough food plants in the area that the population will naturally find an, an equilibrium you're not having any negative effect by creating too many nest places for these things the world desperately needs pollinators and the effect of increasing populations far outweighs the, the negative effect of, of the plummeting insects globally. So, you know, it's good to do these things. So I'll leave you, I'll leave you with it now and you can enjoy the last few seconds of these bees. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.